sunshine day. <laughs> and I hope it doesn't get too hot. Okay, I do have um, a couple of announcements that I'll make in just a minute. Right now, I'd like to welcome everyone that's out there in the netherlands of the black hole or the cloud or whatever you want to call it, watching us from your home. Please join us in lighting a candle so that you can just have a little symbol of how we are all here to worship our Lord and Savior together. <clears throat> Also, I want to remind you all that today is communion, and regardless of your religious affiliation, everyone is invited to the table. Um, please have a cracker or a cookie or whatever suits your fancy and whatever your drink of choice is so that you are ready to celebrate with us. Okay. The announcements that I have so far is, first of all, um, Madeline Sippler is no longer at the temporary address. She, I'm stepping on it. She is at the, um, at Brookdale of Grand Blanks. Visitors call and cards are very welcome. And the United Methodist Women's General Meeting will be at 10 o'clock this Wednesday in the lounge. And you don't need to be a member of our church to attend. <clears throat> Family Fun Day at Otisville, yay, we're having a message from them, is Sunday, July 10th at, from 1 to 3, and the Otisville Vacation Bible School will be July 11th, 12th, and 13th from 6.30 to 8, and Superheroes, Faith Over Fear, is their um, program. Bethany's yard, they make sale, which will be back in the backyard. It is Friday, July 22nd, noon to 4, and Saturday, July 23rd, 9 to 4. There's lots of great stuff out there if you're going to have homemade face with also. Tea on Tuesday will be at 10 for the following, the next three weeks, on the 5th, the 12th, and the 19th with Pastor Kayla at 10 o'clock in the lounge. And it gives us an opportunity to get to know her a little bit better. Oh, we're gonna have to do something about the name tags. We don't need to have the name tags. <laughs> Open house and birthday party for Janet Smith. I know in the tower notes it said to come at noon. Don't come at noon. They're gonna be here decorating and get some stuff ready. So come at one. And it's until four. Sorry about that, Janet. <laughs> um, summer vibe. The youth program is still going to continue to meet on first and third Wednesdays of July and August. So make sure you try and join that. Outdoor family fun nights. All families, everywhere, young and old, are invited to come up every Tuesday night from six to eight during the summer for any kind of activity there is all kinds of different stuff that Mark's come up with. And Pastor Kayla has started an inspirational text. So the information is on the announcements. Take a look at them and it's real easy to get in. I did it like in two seconds. It's easy, easy peasy. And now we are gonna move on in the service with our call to worship, our video, I'm sorry. The fourth of July. God, on the day we celebrate our nation's birth, we place our faith in you. You are the one who gives us freedom. You have endowed us with inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And may we pursue you with the passion that you first pursued us. As we celebrate our great nation, we remember the sacrifice and turmoil that this country was born out of and that continues to shape us today. We know that you are not done here. 
We know that we are far from perfect, and we know that you have a plan. We pause to remember that you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture. Help our country turn toward you. Bring revival to this nation. Give our leaders clear vision and sober minds. Bring peace and justice to our schools and unite us all as brothers and sisters. God, we ask that your kingdom would come and come quickly. May peace and prosperity come to your children living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. Let all who would be heirs in God's kingdom gather this day. All who are adopted in Christ are children of Almighty God. Then let each remember and treasure our royal birthright. And let us not wander or go astray from the glory of God. That we might always proclaim with joy the mercy and grace of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, we have a little party time. It's also Elizabeth and my honor to welcome Pastor Caleb to our church. <laughs> Dear friends, today we welcome Reverend Kayla Rosa Rosé. I, I knew I was going to do that. I practiced it. It didn't work. Today we are we welcome Pastor Reverend Kayla Rose, who has been appointed to serve our past as our pastor. We believe that she is well qualified and has been prayerfully appointed by our bishop, David Bard. Pastor Kayla, you have been sent to live among us as a bearer of the word of God, a minister of the sacraments, and a sustainer of the love, order, service, and discipleship of the people of God. Today, I refer, reaffirm this commitment to the presence of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a people committed to participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, will you who celebrate this new beginning support and uphold Pastor Kayla in these ministries? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger. Please join in singing the doxology. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Reverend Kayla Rose as our pastor. Give her and us patience, courage, and wisdom so to care for one another and challenge one another that together we may follow Jesus Christ, living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, you still call us to go into your service and spread the message of the salvation of your Son. Bless richly, we pray, your servant, Pastor Kayla's entrance into our fellowship. <clears throat> Fill her with the power of your Holy Spirit and let her find with us an open door for the world. We also pray for your church on earth. Equip us all with the spirit of willingness that we with courage and, and <clears throat> can witness about you. By the profession of our mouths and through our way of living, grant us all to partake in your strength and joy so that we can enter into the anxiety and suffering of the world to be radiating and make alive that hope which Christ gives. All this we dare to pray of you, for you are to us the Father of mercy and the God of all grace. You are the Son, the Savior, and the Redeemer. You are the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Helper, and the Giver of life. Blessed be you. Pastor Kayla, accept this Bible and be among us as one who proclaims the word. Amen. Pastor Kayla, take this water and baptize Christians in this place. Amen. Pastor Kayla, Pastor oh. Kayla. Oops, just a second. We have one more to do here. Take this bread and cup and keep us in communion with Christ and his church. Amen. Pastor Kayla, use this hymnal and book of worship to guide us in our prayer and praise. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Kayla, receive the book of di discipline to help us keep the covenant then strengthens our connections at, as United Methodists. Amen. Pastor Kayla, receive this globe to lead us in our mission to this community and to all the world. Amen. This yoke has been laid upon me, and I willingly take it upon myself. Let us pray. Lord God, bless the ministry of your church. We thank you for the variety of gifts you have bestowed upon us. Draw us together in one spirit, that each of us may use our differing gifts as members of one body. May your word be proclaimed with and may we be doers of your word and not hearers only. As we who have died and risen with Christ in baptism, gather at his table and then scatter into the world, may we be one in service to others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. of the Lord be with us always. And also with you. Now we have to do our special Bethany welcoming here. Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Not sorry. Not, Not sorry. sorry. 
We should have had a helper come forward to do that too. I bet somebody in, out there would probably have liked that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Oh, now we just have to figure out where we are in the server. Uh, yeah, our opening hymn is, is I on, is on the Sparrow, and it's verses 1 and the refrain, and the ushers will please gather the prayer cards while we're doing this, um, and please stand. Please join in the confession and pardon prayer. It's on page 8 of our hymnal, or it'll be on the screen. First? Okay. Sorry. I'm going to change the plans. We will do the um, blessing of the offering and prayers of the people. You can be seated. We're getting there. It's all right. Be proud. God is with us and among us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, let us pause for a word of prayer to bless the gifts that have been given this day or that may come in in the week ahead until we gather again in person. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts, the time, the talents that we offer back to you this morning. God bless them, multiply them. We ask that you, we use them wisely, that we thought it to be wise stewards of the gifts, all of the gifts that you give to us, so that we can build your kingdom here in this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I have a question because the boxes are not checked on two of these. Am I allowed to share? Mary, can I share aloud? Yes, and Sue? Yes, of course, right? This is good, exciting news. Uh, Sue had, has a great granddaughter that was born on Friday. Uh, her name's C section. She is in ICU. I'll let you follow up with all the other questions with that, but we can think that she and mom are doing well and celebrate that occasion with you as well, Sue. Uh, and Mary uh, asks for prayer for Dustin, an Indianapolis police officer injured in a car accident during a pursuit. He injured his spines. Prayers for recovery and also for his family during this time. He has a wife and two small children. Uh, prayers for Chris Shipper. You're going to have to help me. Skipper. Skipper, thank you. We'll get names down eventually. 
kind of high. In the meantime, I ask for your grace as, I, as we all adapt to one another and learn. Uh, AFib, uh, calcium around the heart, also block uh, cardioid heart um, disease. At Genesis, uh, prayers are appreciated. Um, giving thanks, uh, Kristen is giving thanks for almost two years. Today program is uh, ditching the mask mandate. <laughs> we do so give thanks for those small victories and, and yet are also reminded that we're still in the midst of illness as well. And so we hold those people who are suffering still in prayer and just invite you to continue to be mindful of that. I know two members uh, at Otisville this morning shared that they were positive and so we're very much still in the thick of it. But we do rejoice where we're those policies have been relaxed a little bit. Giving thanks uh, for prayers, calls, cards from a great church. That is from Gary Stadler. Um, another prayer aloud for Chris uh, Skipper. Okay. Uh, and has a complication for pursuit uh, from complications from surgery. And from Karen Nichols, uh, as she starts treat, uh, new chemo. Uh, so for these and the many, get the prayers that have been lifted via cards and the prayers that remain upon your hearts, we turn now to God for a word of prayer together. Would you join with me? God, our parents, we give you thanks that you have brought us to this new day. The beauty and power of sunshine, wind, fog, and rain are marvelous to our senses. And in them we see how much we depend upon your gifts. Even in the darkest storms and changing tides, help us to see in nature's light the guiding hand in which you hold your children. Pour out on us a spirit of grace and petition and hear us in our need. Let the law of faith which guides us be our standard in judging the laws of land and church and culture, and that our lives be conformed to the faithful love of Christ, that we who call Christ Messiah be empowered to work for freedom, that all nations may be steered by leaders who value each individual in their care, that all people may work for the good of everyone, that the paths we walk be wide enough for all people for the homeless, for those fleeing for safety, for prisoners, for persons of all colors, for all who are ostracized, for those who are dying of incurable diseases, for all who call you, all, for all you call your own, that children may grow up strong and kind, that we give thanks to you for this new life, that families be strengthened for the sake of each other, that all people weakened through illness of mind or body feel your protective hand in our tangible care. That healing of body and soul come to those who have been maimed this morning. And those who think we're not able to say aloud. Give to your people, O God, all that you see and do fit. We pray that all who mourn will know consolation of your love, and that you bless all that we may now, as we pause for a moment of silence. With unending gratitude, we remember our ancestors, your children, the saints of the church whose lives continue to witness to your power. And to your hands, we entrust all that we pray this day and always, O oh God, assured that you hear us. And we pray these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
We will now sing, This is My Father's World. Please stand. Please be seated. Our scripture today comes from Matthew, and I'm in Luke, so that's not very good. Matthew 6, 25 through 27. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature?
Good morning, church. Will you pray with me for a minute? Holy and amazing God, may whatever words come out of my mouth honor and glorify you. May they be heard by ears and hearts to receive whatever message you want received today. And may our worship of you be pleasing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I feel a little better. <laughs> if I start talking really fast, I just need a couple friends to give me the woe sign, okay? When I get nervous, I might talk really fast. So it's, I won't. I, you can be praising, but I'll also know to slow down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Many of you know me as an avid bird watcher. I've got about 20 bird feeders set up around my wooded property, and I faithfully feed my feathered friends every day. I keep their feeders full and the bird bath cleaned and full to ensure that I can see the maximum variety of birds. In our scripture reading today, we hear Jesus tell his disciples to look at the birds of the air. The King James Version says, behold the fowls of the air. Another translation I read phrases this as, observe intently the birds of the air. It's like Jesus is telling us to be bird watchers. I hatched this message. See what I did there? This winter, as we walked through the changes involved in forming a cooperative parish, and I continued working on it while we prepared for Pastor Kathy's retirement and awaited Pastor Kayla's arrival. During the time we were holding meetings to discern whether we would form a cooperative parish, I got the song, His Eye is on the Sparrow, stuck in my head like an earworm. I heard that song one afternoon as I prepared for our Q&A session that week, and listening to it brought me a lot of peace during that time of tension in the church. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? The song asked of me. My first go-to when I want to better understand a hymn is to look it up on UMC Discipleship Ministries. This hymn has an interesting history. The songwriter, Sevilla Martin, made a deep friendship with a couple. They happened to be a Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle. Mrs. Doolittle was bedridden, and Mr. Doolittle was crippled. Yet, they lived happy, inspiring lives filled with faith. When the songwriter's husband asked Mr. Doolittle how he could remain so hopeful and happy, he answered, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And a song was born. This song reminds us that in the midst of anxiety and turmoil, God is with us, watching us, sustaining us. God cares for all his creation, including the sparrows, and, of course, including all of us. It's through God's grace and love and the presence of the Holy Spirit that we are able to set aside worry and anxiety and save tomorrow's troubles for tomorrow. As I read this passage from Matthew that the song and Mr. Doolittle's good advice was based on, it made me want to learn more about the birds of the Bible. Why sparrows, I wondered. I, um, I loved reading that Jesus told us to be bird watchers, and I already had some of my own ideas about what bird watching has shown me about God's creation and his creativity. But you guys know me. I first went to Google, and I Googled birds in the Bible, <laughs> and Google didn't disappoint. <laughs> I spent a week or two reading all of the associated scripture references. The Bible has lots of references to birds, from generalized fowl and beasts of the air to specific species like eagles and storks ravens, sparrows, and doves. Yet, we know that Jesus' parables invite us to look for deeper truth. So I kept digging a little deeper. I kept wondering, why sparrows? And why would Jesus tell us to observe intently the birds of the air? Why is this song stuck in my head? What more does he want me to learn? You guys know I have a lot of questions, right? So next, 
I Googled theology of birds. Google still didn't disappoint, and I stumbled first into a book to read called The Birds, Our Teachers, Biblical Lessons from a Lifelong Bird Watcher, written by theologian and bird watcher John Stott. He even created a new term, ornithology. <laughs> that led me into a deeper theological dive into specific bird references in the Bible, and ultimately, I landed at ornithology.com. I have found my people, and let me tell you, they are excited that Jesus told us to be bird watchers. I spent some time this spring sitting with my cup of tea, watching my birds, these verses in my mind, this song stuck on repeat, thinking about why, why sparrows, and why did I have this song stuck? Jesus tells us to look at the birds, observe how they do not sow or reap or store away grain, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. We know that all of God's creation works together. We see how God gives us soil that supports plants and trees, and those plants and trees support birds and all the other animals, and in turn, also us. God provides for the sparrow, and God provides for us. Jesus goes on to ask two questions to his would-be bird watcher disciples. Are you not more valuable to God than the sparrows? And can any one of you, by worrying, add even a single hour to your day or your life? We have certainly had our share of worry over the last several years and even the last several months. We've been worried about Pastor Kathy's retirement, the cooperative parish, denominational schism, what our ministry will look like with Reverend Rosé. All of these worries are on top of worries about COVID-19 and the pandemic, gun violence in our schools, war in our world. It is easy to get bogged down in worry, even to be immobilized with worry. Ah, there maybe was the deeper truth the Lord was leading me to. Observe intently the birds. Well, as a lifelong birder, let me tell you one thing. Birds are never immobile for long. You may see a dove sit still for a moment, fearing a hawk is around. You might see a woodpecker sit still on a suet feeder while waiting to discern whether a call was a blue jay or a hawk. But by and large, birds are never immobilized with worry and anxiety, and certainly never for more than a moment. They keep moving. They keep flitting from branch to branch, tree to tree, feeder to feeder, gathering up what is good, shucking the good seed, and spitting out the shell. Ah, there's another revelation from observing the birds. Birds take what is good from the feeder and discard what is not immediately. They don't need to worry about everything. They don't need to worry about storing up things that are good or bad. Jesus tells us that the Father provides for the sparrows, and he will surely provide for us. There's no need to store what is from the Father, because it is abundant and available to all. Grace and mercy are good things he gives me and all people, and he gives them freely and without ceasing. I do not need to worry about scarcity of God's goodness. I'm working on not storing up my worries, trying not to pack them all up from the past, whether recent or distant. I don't need to bring them with me into the future. I'm trying to live like the chickadee, present in this moment, content with the seed in front of me, and happy to discard the shell once its usefulness is past. Likewise, here in our church, let us live in this moment, content with all that God has provided for us to this point, and content in the knowledge that he will continue to provide for us. We're in a moment of tension, in between pastors, in between moments in our ministry. What more could we learn from birds in this moment? Let us have the energy of the tufted titmouse. In my yard, the tufted titmouse is the energizer bunny of seed eaters. They spend all day, every day, flitting in and out of the feeder, taking one seed at a time, which they always haul away to crack and eat, and when finished, they return for another. 
They never stop moving, they are always on the go, and they are ever present. So it could be with us here in this church. We continually come in to have our spirits fed, and we return out to the world to spread the good news without ceasing or tiring. Let us gather like the goldfinches. My most abundant birds are the flock of goldfinches at my theaters. They gather in flocks of 10 or 20, all coming to a meal together, making sure that all are getting fed. So too, let us watch for all in our community and ensure that we are caring for one another, that we gather in small groups to welcome and get to know Reverend Rosé and the people of Otisville. Let's spend this summer having potlucks and inviting all our friends to the feast. Let's celebrate youth like white-breasted nuthatches. One of my favorite days of summer is when the nuthatches bring their fledglings to the theater. They come in noisily, two parents trying to wrangle two to four kids. The parents acrobatically move down the tree head first, while the kids are just trying to find somewhere safe to land. The parents call out gently to their young, encouraging them to try out their flying wings, letting them know that they too can make these amazing landings with a little practice. The parents chirp with joy as the young make their first awkward flights to grab a seat on their own. And when they struggle to land on the feeder, the parents will bring them a seed and ensure they do not go hungry just because they're struggling with a good landing. So too can we help the young people in our community find sure footing in their faith with gentle encouragement and access to exciting opportunities to know God. Let's be a safe place for the young people in our community to land. Let us be bold like the Blue Jay. In my yard, the Blue Jays are the first to tell all the birds when the feeders are full, the bird bath is clean, and it is time to sing. They boldly proclaim their good news, and everyone can hear it. First, you hear a Blue Jay shouting, it's arrived, the peanut feeder has been refilled, hallelujah. Next, you hear all the birds begin to gather and hear them call and respond with their own songs. Before you know it, everyone is singing and chirping and the trees are alive with sound. My prayer is that we are able to go out into our community with boldness and great joy and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and invite all people in our community to come to his table and be served with God's grace and mercy. Let's do something new, like the woodpeckers. Woodpeckers are my favorite bird. I have four varieties visiting my yard regularly, hairy, downy, red-bellied, and pileated. They vary in size and color and song and drumming style, but they're similar in one very important way. All of these woodpeckers make a new nest cavity every year. They never use the same nesting cavity repeatedly. The work of their previous year is not in vain though. Many other birds continue to benefit from their old nest cavities. Yet every single year, the woodpecker uses its time and resources to build a brand new nesting location. So too must we be ready to build something brand new with Reverend Rosé and the Cooperative Parish. What we come to the table with, our legacy of mission and ministry, retains its usefulness and goodness, even as we begin to build something new. Observe intently the birds of the air, Jesus tells us. As I prepared this message, my mind kept coming back to the question, why sparrows? Jesus could have mentioned any number of birds, like I just did, and yet he chose to tell us that God watches the sparrows. Often considered undesirable by bird watchers, sparrows are somehow both ubiquitous and yet overlooked. In fact, we often lump them together and simply say sparrows, ignoring the diversity of species like the song sparrow, swamp sparrow, white-crowned, white-throated, chipping sparrows, and more. Truly, even as I watched the birds around me and meditated on this scripture and the worries before us, I overlooked the sparrows. Sparrows aren't the birds that I frequently photograph or am excited to have visit my yard. When I received my copy of the book by John Stott, 
and I read the chapter about sparrows, and I listened for God's still small voice, I discovered the answers. God does not overlook the sparrows. They may be small and unobtrusive. They don't have flashy colors or the loudest song. Yet, God watches over even the lowly sparrow that many would look past to see a more rare or colorful bird. I've certainly overlooked sparrows, and maybe that's the deepest truth he was leading me to after all. Let us not look past the sparrows in our community. Who are the sparrows in our community? Those who are unnoticed, who society calls undesirable, who make themselves small and try not to draw attention to themselves. The unchurched who may not be familiar with our customs, the doubters, the questioners, the ones who don't have a seat at the table right now, the ones who try to blend in, those who don't stand out, they are all precious to God. Let them be precious to us also. Observe intently the birds of the air, Jesus tells us. Will we heed his call? Will we remember that God cares for us as much or more than each of these sparrows? Can we set aside our worry for the future and rest knowing that Christ holds us in his loving hands? We worship a creative and loving God who could have created bird, but instead created thousands of species with distinctive colors, songs, shapes, diets, behaviors, and habitats. I know that God has his eye on the sparrow and every part of his creation, and I know that he watches me and you too. I am looking forward to embarking into a new season of mission and ministry, knowing that his hand will guide us and lead us. When we trust in God, we can soar on the winds of change, assured in his promise to sustain us and empower us for the work he has in store for us to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen. And if you would indulge my earworm, we're going to sing His Eyes on the Sparrow again. You can remain seated or stand as you feel led, and we'll sing together.
Thank you, Elizabeth. That was a very interesting way to look at birds and how they relate to our Father in Heaven, one I hadn't thought about before. Please join me in the Confession and Pardon Prayer on page 8 of our hymnal or on the screen. Merciful God, join me. There is. <laughs> Say uh, with me. <laughs> <laughs> Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take a moment of silent confession in your seat to confess your sins before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. To lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath that is life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim the release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, almighty God. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this morning a reminder that this is an open table. You need not be a member of this church or any church to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Who are my sisters this morning? This is a new rhythm and a new place. We're going to learn this together. Y'all forgot, thought that I forgot the Lord's Prayer earlier, didn't you? <laughs> On Communion Sundays, you'll learn that I incorporate that into the Communion Liturgy, and that is not your practice. I should have shared that before the pastoral prayer. Uh, but again, we learn together, right? Uh, this morning, there is, let me see what's going on here. We've got bread and So those are gluten-free? Are there? No, these are just if they don't want to receive bread from me, if they're not comfortable, or if you don't want to come up front. Okay. The positioning is a little different in every church. So here's how this is going to go, friends. You're going to come forward via the center aisle and receive a piece of bread from me. I did sanitize my hands, just in case you missed it. That happened over there. Uh, before the liturgy, come forward, receive the piece of bread from me. Laura has uh, the juice, and uh, there are receptacles on either side for you to, re to place the cup in the trash when you are done. Come, the table is ready. Oh, the, the ushers will dismiss. Yes, the ushers will dismiss you. Thank you for reminding me of that. If you would like to receive it in your seat, if you would raise your hand. Anybody? Okay.
Let us pray. I don't know if it's protected. Is it protected, Mark? No. All right. Let's pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good taste. Jasmine and I, we wore the same dress. You sure did. <laughs> It's so nice to see Eliana and Mateo and Mama and Daddy. I'm just so thrilled to have little children back in this church. Our closing song is going to be All Things Bright and Beautiful, and those little faces definitely are both of those. All four verses. Please stand. and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all, each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, He made their glowing colors, He made their tiny wings. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruit in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and the Lord God made them all. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great. And small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. I need a cheat sheet for this because if you didn't catch it when Elizabeth was speaking, may we go out with energy of the tufted titmouse. May we gather like the goldfinches, watching for one another and gathering in small groups. May we celebrate youth in all the ways within us, around us, and yet to come. May we be bold like the blue jay. May we proclaim God's messages in all the ways and take a step of faith in this new time as we proclaim God's message for the world. May we do something new like the woodpecker. I know that's a challenge sometimes, but may we do it because it is our call as Christians to do new things, to be bold and function in new spaces. And may we always remember that God does not overlook the sparrow, that God watches out even for the least of these. 
in our communities and in our backyards. May we remember that and remember that God loves all of us the same. Go in peace and remember those things. Amen. Amen.